Good day and welcome. Today, we're starting a series on energy. In this episode, we will discuss stored energy in fuels. We use fuels as sources of useful energy. We will also talk about everyday fuels that we use, including coal, wood, petrol, paraffin, gas, and candle wax. When we burn these fuels, we get useful output energy such as heat and light. Which fuels do we use for cars, buses, boats, and aeroplanes? Share your answer in the comments below. Stick around until the end for some thought-provoking questions to test your understanding. Challenge yourself and see how well you've grasped the material. It's a fantastic way to boost your confidence. Please do not forget to like and subscribe so that you do not miss our weekly uploads. Let's get started. Squirrels store food for the winter months so that they have enough to eat and keep warm. They get their energy from the food they eat. In the same way, a stack of firewood is a store of energy that we can burn in the winter to keep warm. Today, we will see that energy can be stored in fuels such as wood and coal. When we burn these fuels, we get useful energy like heat and light. This energy can sometimes be converted to movement energy. We use energy every day. Fuels are substances that can be burned to produce heat or energy. Energy is stored in fuel. We call this stored energy. The energy is slowly released when the fuel is burnt. Our bodies use energy to walk, run, and play, and this energy comes from the food we eat. Food acts as fuel for our bodies, containing energy that is released when it is broken down with the help of oxygen. We rely on energy for many activities, cooking food, using light to see at night, heating water to wash, and traveling from place to place. This energy comes from various fuels, which can be eaten or burned to produce heat, light, or movement. The energy is stored in the fuel. To live and move, we need energy, which originates from the food we eat. This food energy ultimately comes from the sun. For example, the sun provides energy for grass to grow. The grass is eaten by a grasshopper, which is then eaten by a snake, and the snake is eaten by a hawk. This shows how energy is transferred from the sun to the hawk through a food chain. The energy we get from food is shown on the packages of food that we buy. It is measured in calories or joules. On the packaging, we see kilocalories which means 1000 calories, or kilojoules which means 1000 joules. One adult man needs about 2,500 calories per day in energy from his food. Here is an example of a nutrition label for milk. The sun is the ultimate source of energy for everything on earth. Energy from the sun is used by plants to make food through a process called photosynthesis. Plants use energy from the sun, carbon dioxide, and water to grow. The plant uses the sun's energy to make its own food and stores this food in its roots, leaves, stems, and fruit. This food is then available for animals and people to eat. Until a piece of fruit is eaten, the energy remains stored in the fruit. Because food contains stored energy, it is sometimes called fuel for the body. Fuel is a substance that can be eaten or burned to produce energy. Stored energy is energy that is stored in a substance, such as food or fuel, which can be changed into another form of energy when it is used. To initiate the burning of a fuel, we need to provide input energy. This input energy is the initial energy required to start the burning process. Once the fuel begins to burn, it releases output energy. Output energy is the energy produced during the burning process, usually heat and light energy. Understanding these concepts helps us understand how fuels work and how energy changes occur in everyday processes. Fuels need some energy to start them burning. For example, a candle needs a burning match to set its wick alight. The match provides what we call input energy. This is energy that needs to be input in to start the fuel burning. 
Most fuels need some kind of input energy to burn. Different fuels need different amounts of input energy. A paraffin lamp and candle are easy to light. You just need to bring a burning match near the wick and it will start burning. It is not as easy to light big, heavy wooden logs. To make a fire with such fuel takes more than a burning match. Large wooden logs need larger amounts of input energy. Often firelighters are used. Firelighters are substances that burn easily and are used to start fires. Fuels are sources of useful energy. The helpful sources of energy that we use on a daily basis include coal, natural gas, and paraffin. We use the stored energy in these fuels for many different things. For example, coal, gas, and paraffin can be used for heating and lighting our homes, as well as for cooking. When fuels start burning, the stored energy inside is released and changed to other forms of energy like heat and light. We call this output energy. We use fuels to get many useful forms of output energy. Let us look at some examples of fuels that are useful sources of energy. When petrol or diesel, which are liquid fuels, burn in a car engine, the stored energy is released and converted into movement, making the car move. These fuels are made from crude oil, which is drilled from deep underground. They power cars and trucks by converting stored energy into movement energy. Cars and taxis get their energy from petrol or diesel, which is stored in the car's petrol tank. When burned in the car's engine, the heat energy makes the engine work, causing the car to move. Coal is a type of fossil fuel mined from the earth. It provides heat when burned and can be used to cook food and warm houses. In large quantities, Coal is burned at power stations to generate electricity. When coal is burned, it turns turbines in power stations, producing electricity. We use electricity for many tasks, such as running appliances, cooking, and lighting our homes. Electricity is essential for cooking, providing light, operating traffic lights, and running various appliances. Candle wax is a fuel that, when lit, burns to provide light and heat. Candles are an inexpensive way to light a space. Most candles are made from paraffin wax, but they can also be made from beeswax, gel, or plant-based materials like soybeans or palms. The burning wax creates a flame that emits heat and light energy. Candles were first invented by the ancient Egyptians, who used animal fat to make them. Paraffin is another type of fuel that we use for lighting, heating, and cooking. Paraffin is an inexpensive fuel. Paraffin is burned in paraffin lamps and stoves which provide us with heat and light. Paraffin comes from the processing of crude oil, a fossil fuel. Trees are cut down to make firewood that is burned to heat homes. It is a cheap source of fuel but unfortunately it contributes to pollution and global warming. Gas is a type of fuel that we use to make things hot, like when we cook food, keep our homes warm, or even light up a room. Gas is usually stored in special containers called cylinders or tanks. To fit more gas into these containers, it is pressurized and turned into a liquid so we can store a lot of gas in a small space. Gas can be used for cooking, heating, and lighting, such as with gas lamps that provide light. Natural gas comes from deep underground, where it was formed millions of years ago from the remains of ancient plants and animals. This gas is extracted from the earth and processed to make it clean and safe to use. What are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels include petroleum, oil, coal, and natural gas. They are called fossil fuels because, like fossils, they are the remains of organisms that lived long ago. These organisms, such as plants, animals, and other living things, were buried deep in the earth for millions of years. Over a long time, heat and pressure converted the remains of these organisms into fossil fuels. Wind is not considered a fuel. 
Wind is a natural resource that can be harnessed to produce energy, but it does not fit the traditional definition of a fuel. Fuels are substances that can be burned or consumed to release energy, such as coal, oil, natural gas, and wood. Wind, on the other hand, is used to generate energy through wind turbines, which convert the kinetic energy of moving air into electrical energy. This makes wind a source of renewable energy rather than a fuel. Energy from the sun is very important for many things on Earth. Let's look at how this energy moves around with a flow diagram. First, think about the sun shining on a tree. The tree uses the sun's energy to grow through a process called photosynthesis. This makes the tree grow and produce wood. When we cut down the tree, the wood has stored energy from the sun. If we burn the wood, this energy is released as heat and light, which we see as fire. The flow diagram looks like this. The sun's energy goes to the tree. The tree becomes wood. The wood is burned and turns into fire. You can draw this with boxes labeled sun, tree, wood, and fire, connected by arrows to show the energy flow. Fuels come in three main forms, solids, liquids, and gases. Solid fuels, such as wood, coal, and charcoal, are firm and maintain their shape. When we burn solid fuels, they release energy in the form of heat and light. Liquid fuels, like gasoline and diesel, flow and can be poured. These fuels are commonly used in vehicles to provide energy for movement. Gas fuels, including natural gas and propane, are invisible and spread out to fill any container. They are often used in homes for cooking and heating. That's it for today. Before we go, try to answer the questions that will pop up next. You can pause the video to give yourself more time. This will help you remember what we learned. In the next video, we'll talk about how fuels burn, why they need heat to start, and oxygen to keep burning. We'll also learn about fire safety because fires can be dangerous. Check the description for more videos. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our weekly videos. Thanks for watching and stay safe.